case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. The court also considered Mrs. Throop's contention that a negligent slip and fall at F.E. Young's premises led to the fatal accident. However, her claim was categorically ruled out. The court stated that the mere fact of the floor being slippery previously could not assume it was so on the day of the accident. A significant counterpoint raised by F.E. Young was the notion of privileged communication, stemming from a physician-patient relationship. While they claimed this as a defense, the court found it to be inconsistent and hence inadmissible. Mrs. Throop filed an appeal. The matter saw a different trajectory when it was revealed that Hennon had a pre-existing heart condition and was advised against driving by his physician. The appellate court ruled that such evidence, which was previously disregarded, did not eliminate the possibility that Hennon was negligently driving at the time of the accident. Therefore, it supported the conditions for the application of res ipsa loquitur, the principle that the negligence is inferred from the nature of the accident. The disagreement over proper legal instructions on falling asleep while driving was settled in the appellate court. It ruled that the instructions given by the trial court were indeed accurate. Notably, during these proceedings, a change of judge took place. The judge initially handling the case was unable to continue, necessitating another judge to take over. Despite the shift, the court upheld its previous decisions and affirmed the judgment in favor of F.E. Young and Company. The compelling essence of Throop v. F.E. Young and Co. lies in the complex interplay of responsibilities between employers and their staff, bringing to the forefront the boundaries of liability and the intriguing nuances of the res ipsa loquitur doctrine. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.